as I as I drive uh, to work and from work, I I look outside and I mean here Southern California is very beautiful. I look at the liberties that we have in this nation still by the grace of God. But much more than that is the liberty that we have in Christ, church, that we are not redeemed by incorruptible things or anything in this world could offer us, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So in that liberty, wherein Christ has made us free, let's stand and glorify our God tonight. Thank you, loving Father. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Hallelujah, mighty God. Thank you for that liberty that is in Jesus as we come to you, Lord, to receive of your blessing, to receive of your provision, oh God, to receive of your grace, forgiveness, whatever it is that we need, oh God, that you may supply it according to your riches and glory, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord's name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, mighty God. We love you. We thank you, God. Our church, we glorify you, oh God. And the church says, Amen. 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 This time, Brother Aaron will come forward and lead us in songs. Amen. Amen. Could you please turn to page 253? We're going to sing the Glory Land Way on two, page 253. I'm in the way, the bright and shiny way. I'm in the glory land way, telling the world that Jesus saves me. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer, the way grow is clearer, for I'm in the glory land way. Good to be in church tonight, amen. amen. Good to be in that glory land way going on. We can go ahead and give glory to his name while we're in the glory land way. Could you please turn to page 89? We're gonna sing glory land. We're gonna sing glory to his name on page 89. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was a flood of fire. Glory to his name. We're singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a flood of fire. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. And Jesus so sweetly Where he took me in Glory to his name We're singing glory to his name Glory to his name There to my heart was the blood of God Glory to his name Oh precious fountain that saves from sin I am so glad I have entered 
Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of I. Glory to his name. So come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Go plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. We're singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory Let's sing that chorus one more time. We're singing glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of life, glory to his name. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for all your Oh, loving God, thank you, loving God. We give glory to your name, Lord. For you so righteously deserve it, oh God. Thank you, loving Father. Thank you, loving Jesus, for being so good to us. For everything that you provide for us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated. At this time, we're about to uh, receive our Tuesday night tithes and offerings. And all Christians cheerfully give unto the Lord. As the Bible, as the word of God instructs us, these are the words of the Lord. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. It is good having, a, I've, I've been thinking, uh, having a savings account, but uh, God doesn't need a savings account. He can open the windows of heaven and yes. give us a blessing Amen. that we may not have enough room to hold it. At this time, Brother Clayton will come forward and collect our Tuesday night tithes and offerings. And Brother, if you could please, please pray. And Father, thank you, Lord, for this night and the opportunity to give to you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for your giving. The Lord will truly bless you. Um, we appreciate your tithes and your offerings. At uh, this time, Reverend Rossi will come forward and preach to us the word of God. God bless you, sir. Amen. 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 Praise God. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Thankful for the opportunity to preach. Thankful for Reverend Sister Polk and for everybody here. God's good. Amen. 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 How many of God loves you? Amen. Amen. So, Brother Rossi, you always ask me that. You always say that. Well, I'm going to keep saying it because God loves you. Amen. Amen. And I never get tired of reminding myself that he loves me too. I'd like to direct your attention this evening to Hebrews chapter 2. You know, it's a blessing. Um, pastor was talking the other day. When, you, when you're when pastor at church, you're preaching all the time. It's kind of nice when you're not. You get a chance to break. You get a break. You get to put things together and develop stuff. And so and so I appreciate the chance to preach. And the Lord started dealing my heart about this when Reverend Keckle was in town. And so Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 11. Just one verse of scripture. And then we'll ask pastor to pray for the message and messenger. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. And with the help of the Lord, I'd like to minister on the title of the message, Truth in the Fiction, or Knights of the Round Table. Pastor, you please pray. Father, we thank you today for the word of God, for this opportunity to be gathered together, God, once again, to hear your word. I ask you, God, tonight, just to bless in a special way, help from Rossi to minister your word, help us, God, to receive God, and grow from it, accomplish your will tonight, and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. You know, uh, like the pastor said, he was going to ha have me share something on Sunday morning, but God kept pushing me back, and I was fine with it because, well, he's the pastor, but not only because everything he was sharing was lining up anyway. Like, 
you know, as long as God's message gets out, it doesn't matter who shares it. Amen. And so we just thank for the Lord and thank for the opportunity to be here and share God's word. And God is good. I'd like to like to share this with you in northwestern Europe. The times between 400 and 1000 A.D. is called the Dark Ages for two reasons. First, because of the lack of written history, it leads to speculation and much confusion. Well, in our time, it's it's in a con, it's in a contrast. Excuse, there is excuse me, has too much information that leaves people equally in a land of confusion. There's just so much out there that people don't know which way to go. The second reason is called the Dark Ages in the wake of the fall of the Roman Empire. Quote, backwards ways and practices seem to prevail. Unquote. This seems eerily familiar. From this time, from this time, uh, from this time frame, a legend spread forth of a leader named Arthur and his knights of the round table. They stood for honor and morality in a dark world. And, every gener and in every generation, God has had a remnant of men and women that held themselves each and each other to a higher honor and became a beacon of light in their, in their time. The legend of King Arthur may or may not be true. The first records of him appear in the 9th century as a warrior. Later in the 11th century, his famous round table is mentioned. In varying stories, it could seat anywhere from 12 to 150 knights. But the purpose was the same of this round table. The round table had no head, and all the knights as brotherhood sat around it as equals. In Winchester Cathedral today, I got a chance to visit there many years ago, uh, in, in the army, there is, a ta there is a round table hanging in the Great Hall for approximately the 12th century. It is said to be King Arthur's round table. This legend's truth is not the focus of our attention this evening, but rather the underlying truth that it points to. In other words, there is truth in the fiction. Reverend Keckel was talking about people write these fictitious stories of good and evil, and they, they, they come from somewhere because if we strictly looked at things through a through a evolutionary thought process of just science only, where would good and evil even fit in there? There'd be no place for it. But yet he was sharing that there's these stories of good and evil because there's an underlying truth in them. And that's from that point is where the beginning of this message came from. There's truth in the fiction. People develop stories of heroism, of good and evil, of escape from death and victory snatched from the clutches of defeat. We dream of such stories because we all know on a fundamental level that we are eternal beings made to live beyond this short life. And one man said, this life is a dressing room for the one to come. Let me point you to the true story from which the great stories of fiction all point. One true story, the story of King Jesus and his table of knights and ladies. Amen. God's good. Amen. And so we begin to look at our text here in Hebrews chapter 11, chapter 2, rather, verse 11, for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. We're one in Christ, one fellowship, one unity. Uh, there are no big eyes or little U's, as Reverend Johnson likes to say, but we all have the same value in the eyes of God. We all, God died for us equally, amen, and shed his blood to wash us free from sin. Jesus, and that the Bible continues on to say here in the next couple of verses, verse 12 and 13, saying, I will declare thy name, excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church while I sing praises unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. And so what do we see here? Jesus isn't ashamed of his brothers and sisters. And we are the fellowship of the unashamed. God's not ashamed of you. We ought not be ashamed of him. Amen. He's not ashamed to say, that's my child. I was thinking about this. And as I was going over the soul winning sheet, I thought of maybe Sir Holly or, or Sir McDonald. You know, I thought of maybe Lady Torres or something to that effect. Or maybe Lord and Lady Polk or something like that. Lord and Lady uh, Rajewski. I just thought you were going to think of us as knights of the round table in a regal sense. In just a glorious way. But Jesus isn't ashamed of his brothers and sisters. We are all... Part of the fellowship of the un un unashamed. Uh, David had in a loose sense, uh, had his round table of mighty men and you know, valor in chapter 2 of Samuel, excuse me, 2 Samuel chapter 23, where these were great men, of, and, but they all knew their rank, amen? They knew David was in charge, amen? Just like us in the church, God died for us all equally, but God has a rank structure through our leadership and also here at the local church, Pastor Polk being the pastor. But we're all equal, on equal footing. God loves us all the same, amen? Amen. There's no big eyes or little use. There's no ego in God's house. Uh, none of that exists. We all just want to work together for a common cause to, to, to crush the serpent's head and to reach the lost for Jesus. Uh, and so we see in this situation that there are this idea, there's truth in the fiction. We are God's brothers. Well, I'd like to ask the question, how 
how did we become his brothers? How did this happen? And Ephesians chapter 2 answers the question, how we became his brothers. In verses 1 through 3, it says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We were under a wicked rule before, Amen. We were under a different prince, the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the devil, uh, among whom we all had our conversation. There's no exception. We all need a savior. Amen. We all needed Jesus to bring us out among whom we all had our conversation. Pastor actually preached from here just the other day in verse 10. But he says here, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past and the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And many times when people read this, they automatically go to the lust of the flesh, think of sexual sins, and that does fall into that. But it's other things too. It's just the carnal mind in general. It's a competitive mindset. And you know, God's, you know, in, in the nights of the round table, they sparred one to another and, and to make each other better, but not to hurt each other. Amen. And they had this certain unity that was present and because they knew if the soldier, or soldier, we'll use Marines for this one, if the Marine on the left was strong and the Marine on the right was strong, that they, that, that meant they had strong companions on either side. And we defend one another and we lift up one another in prayer. And so I began to look at this some more, how that this mindset, and forgive me, I get kind of Go when I get fast. How many of God loves you? Amen. God's good. We are subject, uh, excuse me, we were the subjects of another evil kingdom. We were under this old mindset in the old worlds, and I was beginning to think of that competitive nature of everybody trying to one up the other. You know, that sister wore my dress, you know, or something like that. I don't know where that came from. I'm just sharing it. Anyway, or that, I can't believe that. Yeah, that guy, he's always robbing the attention or whatever it may be. Or just things in you know, that carnal mindset of, of doggy dog world. You know, when I came, I, I'm so thankful for the, for the love of God in the church because it's the love of God's there. Amen? Just a, there's, just a, a, there's just a comfort there. And appreciate the, the, the standards and the rules and the leadership of the church because I know we go to conference and there's a special sense because there's, there's boundaries and there's rules and there's structures so we all know what the rules are so we know how to communicate one with another and we have a great time. And we're not all like, well, I don't know what he believes. I'm not sure what she believes. I'm not sure what they believe in some of these other kind of churches where nobody knows what anybody believes. And how you doing? We'll see you later. I'm going to go watch my football. And nobody talks to each other. And so, But in our church, we have this structure and I thank God for it. Amen? Because it provides a fellowship and a unity. And so thankful for that. And, and so we're going to look at this here. We were we were part of, we had this old conversation, or this word conversation means manner of life, among whom we also had our conversation at times past, and the lust of the flesh, and feeling desires of the, of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You know, if you take away the Spirit of God from us, we're just a bunch of wild animals. It's like a bunch of dogs. Right. You know, the carnal mind. It's just survival of the fittest. But, you know, but Jesus is the opposite of survival of the fittest. He's the opposite of the evolutionary time frame. He came down and died on the cross for you and I. He didn't, he didn't say, well, they're not good enough. If you follow the evolutionary time frame, we'd all have died. But thank God, somebody that was greater than us stepped down and humbled himself to lift us up. And that's exactly what Jesus did. And so we see here in these verses, verse 4, that King Jesus loved us, delivered us, and placed us in his court with himself. Listen to what the word of God says. But God. And that's a message all by itself. But God who is rich in mercy and his great lover with he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together. And I love that. Quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And I love this. Quickened us together. Raised us up together. You know we all have our stories of how we got saved. Speaking, We're speaking here of the church. If you're not, if you're not part of the church and you haven't accepted Christ today. This story can be your story. But we see here in this situation that he says he raised us up together. I begin to think, I have a story how I got saved. And no doubt, if you know Christ in your life, you have a story as well. But my story is not better than your story. My experience isn't greater than yours. Uh, all of our stories raise us up together, amen, on an equal footing. And your story is just as glorious as mine is. And, and so thankful for God. And the word of God says here that he made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And I'm just letting my mind and my imagination go a little bit, thinking about sitting around a round table in glory, uh, hanging out with the Father and hanging out with the Son and hanging out with the Holy Ghost. And God invited us into the fellowship of the Beloved. He invited us into the triune fellowship and said, come on in. You're a brother. You're a sister of God. You know, people
people think, well, if I live for God, I can't do this or I can't do that. Friend, you have no idea what you can do. What God has offered you. The opportunity to be a part of the God, just to know God in a real way and to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What a powerful reality that is. And so we see here, he says that you're God's little G. And Jesus is the king of kings. He's the high king. We're a nation of kings. Amen. And so we're a nation of kings. There are no losers here. If you know Jesus, you belong to God. Amen. Amen. So there's no reason for insecurities and all that stuff because God loves us all the same. And so I'm going to think about this some more. It says, and I just love this part here in verse seven, that in the ages to come. So why did he do this? Why did Jesus do this? Well, he first of all, he loved us. But in the ages to come, not this age, but the ones to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace. The exceeding riches of his grace. That grace is divine favor. We didn't earn it. We couldn't earn it. God granted it to us. And once you've been touched by the divine favor of God, your heart, you never want to live the same again. You never want to be the same person you were. You don't want to live a life of sin anymore because once you've been touched by the love and the grace and the power of Almighty God, you realize you've been selected to a higher standard and a higher lifestyle. You've been selected to be more than conquerors to Him that loved us, to live the victorious life as pastor's been sharing. And so we see here in this situation, he's, He brought us up that in the ages to come, He might show His exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. And I begin to picture this. While we're in up in, when we're up in glory, when this land pastor was talking about go, getting ready to go home and things like that and focusing on heaven. Uh, when we're in heaven and we're up there in glory, maybe sitting around God's round table, so to speak, uh, we'll be up there uh, boasting in God for all eternity of what he's done for us. Sitting around the table telling the story one more time. Brother, let me tell you how I got saved. Brother, I've heard that a million times. Let me tell you again. Let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you how I got healed. Let me tell you how I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you what God did and just boasting in God, exceeding grace, drinking the cup with Christ. For the Lord said, Jesus said, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I'm looking forward to drinking with Jesus. Amen. And it won't be alcohol. It'll be fresh fruit. Amen. It's going to be glorious sitting around talking about oh, how good God is. How glorious He is. Talking about the great exploits and the victories that were won for Jesus. And all that he's done for us and i'm getting ready to close in our last point the nobility of this brotherhood and what is the nobility of this brotherhood we have the noblest of missions to bring the gospel to the world the word of god tells us in john chapter 17 or he says in verse 18 as thou hast sent me into all the world into the world even so have i also sent them into the world god invites us into fellowship to go out and get, reach more people amen yes, to bring more people around the round table so to speak and he goes on to say in verse 19 and for thy sakes i sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through, sanctified through the truth and, and so we realize now that we're saved now that god's going to work in our life we don't live the way we used to live anymore we're christians we're believers we belong to a higher standard ain't thank god for that amen amen a glorious life in god more than conquers him that loved us and as, as the lord sanctified himself for our benefit we sanctify ourselves for our fellow brothers and sisters benefit that the world can see jesus in us and so we see here in this predicament we are called to a higher order a higher order and we follow our king jesus example but as he which hath called you is holy so be holy in all manner of conversation verse 20 through 22 i'm getting ready to close that they may all be one jesus is praying here to the father let me go back up to verse 20 as I get ready to close. I'm going to watch the time here. Should sure I get ahead of myself? That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me. Verse 20, forgive me. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. This wasn't just to the disciples, but for us as well. Amen. Amen. Reaching out to all that would believe that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. What is the indicator that God is real? I'll know you're my, they said, he said, well, I'll know you're my disciples because you have love one toward another. And he echoes it here. When there's that unity because the church, because the world is so at odds. But the church isn't like that. It's a haven. It's a place of unity. It's a place of fellowship that the world, and I love this, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And he repeats it again in verse 23. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me as we love each other. And, and, we, and we just become, I don't know about you, I'm so thankful to be part of the family of God. And so thankfully part of the round table, so to speak. I, when I, you know, every time I sit down at a table, whether it's at conference 
or fellowship meeting, we got one coming up, or whether it's at the home and maybe whether we're just fellowship. And I, I always think of the Knights of the Round Table, God's men and women. You're a special group because God died for you, and I'm thankful to be a part of it. Amen? Amen. And it's just a blessing just Amen. to be a part of it. It's, 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 you can't get it anywhere else. I still look back at my time in service home, serviceman home very fondly. And I look forward to various different times and experiences other places in the work of the Lord very fondly. But the part that I, and I want to close on this latter last portion here. It was so powerful to me, and when it first came to my attention, it just so touched my heart. For he says this in verse 23, I and them, and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Now that part right there. He says, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. You know, the Father loves us the same way he loves his only begotten Son. The same love that God the Father has for Jesus is the exact same love that God has for you, for his child. I mean, that's powerful. When you think about it, how many know God that Jesus is God's beloved? Amen. Amen. But God loves us the same way. So therefore, we can stand up with our head held high knowing that we belong, we are somebody in God, that we we belong to the King, and we are of a royal and a noble line. We have been invited into this fellowship, and we don't treat it lightly. It's important, and it means the world to us, because God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you will kneel before the Lordship of King Jesus, and allow Him to remove your old sinful garments, let Him dress you in His holy armor, and become a son of God, And take your place at his table. For Jesus said when he left this world, I go to prepare a place for you. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to God, as past prepares to come, God loves you. God's for you. God bless you. At this time, as the front is open for prayer, you can come forward and pray to Almighty God tonight. Think about what was preached tonight about King Jesus submitting to his Lordship. Have him him as the Lord of our lives. God bless you tonight.
God for that amazing grace of God. Amen. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. There is fellowship at the Silverstone's home. Everyone is welcome to come. Tomorrow night, Bible study at 7.30 at the Servicemen's home. Okay, we're going to take a little uh, deviation from the book of Acts. There's been something that I've been praying about, uh, wanting to share. And Rossi touched on it a little bit. He didn't know. Okay, so we'll be teaching tomorrow night, 7.30 at the home. Okay, let's have a good Bible study tomorrow night. Remember who you are. Amen. Amen. We are kings and priests unto God. Amen. Amen. We are a peculiar people. Yes. Hallelujah. A royal priesthood. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sons and daughters of God. Yes. Okay, so God bless you tonight is our prayer. And let's go ahead and dismiss the service tonight. Reverend Walker, sir, would you dismiss us, please?